Hi, welcome back to Brooks's Bass Corner and my Essential Bass Album series, looking back at albums that, in my view, are essential listening for any bass player. It might be an album that sold millions of copies worldwide and thrust the bassist onto megastardom, or it might be an album that didn't sell particularly well, but cut a niche for that particular bassist to propel the band or artist onto greater things. Or it might just be a great album in terms of the bass performance. Either way, I think these albums deserve your attention, and perhaps by watching this video, you might be intrigued to check out the album for yourself. And who knows, maybe it will excite you as much as it excited me when I first discovered it. Sadly, due to copyright restrictions, I can't use audio examples from the album, but where suitable, I will indicate particular songs and their timestamp that I'm referring to. If you enjoy the video, please hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell so that you get notifications when I post new videos, and please give the video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions regarding the album being discussed or the video, leave them below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. On with this episode's album, it's Weather Report's Heavy Weather. Despite appearances on the preceding Weather Report album Black Market, it was this album that essentially exploded the Pistorius phenomenon into the public consciousness. Having released his legendary solo album a year earlier in August 1976, musicians the world over were already talking about the new god of electric bass. But it would be the release of Heavy Weather that would illuminate the talent, genius, and sheer musicality that Jacko possessed. Having played on Black Market, Jacko was now a permanent fixture in the band, following Alfonso Johnson's departure. And although Black Market was successful, Heavy Weather had to improve upon it. With the writing credits spread around the band, not just Zawinul and shorter compositions, the material benefited, and the album as a whole became a worldwide smash around the globe reaching number one on the US jazz charts and sealing the band's reputation as a trailblazing recording unit and a dynamic touring band. Jacko was certainly at his peak or very close to it in this period. His playing, compositional skills and all-round orchestration and flair for arranging are clearly evident. Bass, mandocello, drums and steel drums are all credited to him in the liner notes and in Teen Town, he created a signature piece that is solely identified with him. His 1962 Fender Jazz, the Bass of Doom, was fitted with rotor sound swing bass round wound strings, each with a different silk winding. Martin Howe, formerly of rotor sound, is quoted as saying, Jacko felt each string represented a different color and he used our regular 66L sets. This was then plugged into his acoustic 360 amplifiers and acoustic cabinets as required and then mic'd up, although it is possible that a DI feed was also taken. Birdland opens the album and the first we hear of Jacko is the pinched harmonic melody at 19 seconds, but to be fair, I could highlight so many flourishes and bass moments in this song that it would fill the screen. The fact the song became a crossover hit only served to help album and ticket sales and create heightened interest in the band. Yet the song sounds as fresh and vibrant today as it did back in 77. And as a bassist, we all know and probably recall the first time we heard Birdland and Heavy Weather as a body of work. A remark you've made showcases Jacko's elegant playing, proving that he wasn't just about flurries of notes and highly energetic playing. When a song required a fluid legato approach, Jacko was equally capable. His tone is sublime, the epoxied fingerboard making every round wound fueled note ring out and sustain when required. No wonder his tone and overall playing turned heads wherever he went. Teen Town hardly needs an introduction and is synonymous with Jacko and forever will be. The bass tone is thick and biting with a hint of distortion and melts perfectly with the constant open hi-hat pattern and Wayne Shorter's melodic motifs. The genius of the piece is the open spaces Presented with a blank canvas, the whole band managed to let the music breathe, while Jacko simply lays down a legendary bass track. Harley Quinn paints Jacko in a more supportive bass role, yet his uniquely identifiable tone still stands out a mile. Palladium, with its Latin jazz flavour, is a great vehicle for Jacko's immensely strong groove playing, but listen to his steel drum contributions also, 
an instrument he would play more and more as his albeit short career progressed. Havana is quintessential Jacko, a master of his art, and they will suggest this as an ideal example of his playing. His sheer command of the instrument is very much apparent. The problem with any discussion that involves Jacko is there's simply not enough space or time to go into every detail and nuance that needs covering and highlighting. Heavy weather put both the band and Mr Pistorius firmly on the musical map, hence why the album is still talked about so warmly over 40 years on. As a musical statement, it has barely aged and serves as a bold illustration of the energy, passion and vivacity of Mr John Francis Pistorius. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell so that you get notifications when I post new videos, and please leave a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any comments regarding the album or the video, leave them below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Look forward to seeing you here again on Brooks's Bass Corner.